Hey, what's up, Reefers? Have you met the rest of the Reef Squad? <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. So I'm feeling much better now. Just got out of concert. We're kind of uh, waiting to get out and start filming the intro. There's a lot of things I really want to cut together and show you guys, but I did not get a chance because I was too sick. However, finally got a chance to put something together. So, enjoy. Hey, what's up, Reefers? There are three things I want to share with you guys today. Number one, feeding frogfish mochi. Number two, the WAMAS meeting that went to last weekend. And number three, a abalone rescue at a Chinese supermarket. It's as crazy as it sounds. I'm not sure too much about frogfish mochi recently, so I figure it's time for a little update. So these days, I have been feeding him one medium-sized gut-loaded ghost shrimp once a day or every other day, depending on the size of the ghost shrimp. And once a week or every other week, I will feed him a small damsel. Ooh. One feeding event stood out because this shrimp is just straight up ninja. It's a ninja shrimp. Just take a look. So how cute are you? So I'm so good for you. Oh, oh shit! Nice damn. job! Damn. Oh my oh, god! Damn. Hero! Seeing how this shrimp fought for his life so valiantly, uh, Emily convinced me to pull the shrimp out and just give it another chance. So the shrimp live on to this day in the feeder tank. As you can see, Mochi has really grown to a decent size, almost like a fist size now. And he has a lot of protrusion on his body, so it's really interesting. Another really cool aspect is that it's taking on a yellow coloration. So I think in maybe half a year or so, it may be fully yellow. And this is not like a regular yellow. This is neon yellow, so it'll be really interesting to see. Make sure it's in focus. It's a good shot. Oh, go on. Oh, my God. The second story I want to tell you about is the WAMES meeting I went to two weeks ago. WAMES is my local reef club, and I truly believe that reef club takes this hobby to the next level because now we are adding a truly social aspect to this great hobby. At this particular WAMES meeting, as usual, we have fantastic coral frags for sale. Are you lost? I feel lost. It's like, what's going on? Yeah. yeah I, like, I like your shirt. <laughs> Why am I here? <laughs> You wanna say anything? <laughs> or you make sure you put it on YouTube. <laughs> I love Emily. Her camera skills is awesome. Everybody go follow Emily. I'm following you on Instagram. Right. Oh, thank well, you. Thank you. you. <laughs> you it's not about uh, reef though. Like, you was like about drinking something problem. through a snorkel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Shout out to Emily. Julian is really a man that needs no introduction. Uh, I said it before with Sanjay, if there was a Mount Rushmore in our hobby, Julian would be one of the smiling mugs of it. Um, <laughs> you, know, you know, a 30 or 40 watt uh, centrifugal pump. This thing's just gonna go on and on and on and on. It's gonna last. So this is a reasonably good option if you maintain the battery and force battery. And this time we invited Mr. Julian Sprung to talk to us about disaster planning. After the large big hurricane that hit Florida, Mr. Julian Sprung went through quite a bit and he got lots of tips to give out, which is fantastic because it's not something that we always think about. Right after the presentation, we have a bunch of raffles and Mr. Sprung won a well-deserved MP4. Did you say 605? No. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Yes, it is. Uh, Wait, what? What? That's incredible. That's right. Wow. That's right. That's right. Wow. That's right. I was able to bring home four liquid bottles of ocean nutrition food, including oyster feast, which I had been meaning to buy. So it was an awesome day in my book. 
During this meeting, I was able to pick up the Zoa for the next Zoa Grow Up contest. And I believe these are the pink Sakura Zoas. They look fantastic, can't wait to grow them out. I also gave Mighty Nano Tank, aka Ben, a small bag of great macroalgae. So I think he's probably planning to do some uh, macroalgae eating videos soon. <laughs> Stay tuned on his channel. This meeting also marked the last meeting that Tom will be the president of WAMS before he stepped down. Tom has been doing a fantastic job leading this club up to this point, and I'm sure that Alan will do just as great a job because he's just as knowledgeable and just as patient and just as kind as Tom. So I look forward to see where the club is going in the future year. The last story I want to share with you guys is kind of a crazy one. Have you ever seen live seafood at supermarket and thought to yourself, I wonder if I could keep this in my reef aquarium? I have and I acted on so, it this time. We actually see live abalone, farm abalone. And that should be salt water. And me and Emily uh, seriously gonna get one of these and try to keep it in the refrigerator for a little bit, see if it'll live. Uh, yeah, whoa. <laughs> So we're gonna get one of these guys and uh, let's see how it does in the refrigerator. And <laughs> I have a reef club meeting coming up, so I'm probably gonna give this guy up to somebody with a larger tank. And of course we have a lot of different other animals, but I think uh, abalone is probably the best bet. Just look at this. But, but these, these guys are huge though. Let's see how it does. I can feed them like lettuce and stuff or seaweeds. But uh, have a good life. Let's do this. When you get to a certain point in this hobby, you start going a little crazy. So today, me and Emily were walking through the Chinese supermarket and we always see different seafood in there. And today they happen to get in some farm-raised abalone. Uh, so seeing how it's $7 each, uh, I thought, you know what, let's, let's give it a try. Especially because like, I was able to see the mouth of the abalone. It was actively scraping algae off the tank. Uh, so here we are. Here we are. I figure like at the worst, if it really didn't work out, we can just cook it. I posted an image of this on Instagram at Inappropriate Reefer, and somebody actually brought up a really good point. Not all abalone are tropical, and I'm not sure if this one is. So that's what we're actually gonna test first. I actually got a lot of these. Uh, I bought a pack of three thermometer, and they all measure pretty similar. So I think they're relatively accurate. So I'm gonna drop this probe inside the water. We just came from outside, so it may be a little bit lower as well. So we're reading 70.5. That's quite low because the tank is, I've been running tank around 77, 76, 77. So it will definitely take some acclimation. Uh, interestingly enough, margarita snails, one of my favorite snails, which is commonly sold in the reef aquarium hobby, is also coming from water temperature around here. So they're able to be acclimated to tropical temperature, but they do live shorter as a result. And okay. to double check, I got this uh, infrared thermometer. So I can eat it earlier. So right? with this, it's actually 72. So we're gonna let the probe soak for a little bit to see, and here's 72. Uh, in the meantime, we are going to uh, test for the specific gravity. And it's funny, because for my reef tank, I use a swing arm hydrometer, but for something like this, I'm actually busting out the uh, refractometer. So let's, let me just rinse the pipette first. Looks professional. And then we're gonna do three drops, make sure it's covered, and then we're gonna lay down the little thing. And then we'll look into the light. Don't you need to wait with? Oh, dude. Except Salinity is perfect. It's one, uh, the salinity is at 1.026. So this mm. matched perfectly to uh, a crown water. Can I water. take a look? Of course. Here. So you gotta look into the light, point it to light. You see how there's like a there's a blue and then white? Oh. Look into the light. Turn turn towards the light. Mm. All right. And the dividing line right there tells you what is the salinity. I think it's at 1.026 or 1.027. 1.025, oh, 7. Okay, yeah. 1.027? Yeah. Okay. Wait, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> For acclimation, I really like the Innovative Marine's drip system. Basically, you squeeze this to start the prime and water flows through. Usually, I like to let it run a little bit to kind of flush out whatever was in the tube before. Um, I used this maybe two, three days ago, so the water should be relatively clean, or the tube should be relatively clean. And now you use this little thing, the IV drop controller, to control the rate. And I'm gonna, because I have a lot of water in here, I'm gonna do a 
relatively quick trip in terms of snails and whatnot. I'm gonna drip, we're gonna fill maybe like to here, and then we're gonna dump out the water and continue to drip to acclimate. So he's struggling. He's Help moving around. He's like he's ready for food. Look at the check, look at that refugium. Okay, I'll move the light. Just just look here. See how much macroalgae and oh, how much algae. There's we got my there. Sao Hei. Yeah, so there's the damsels, and then we got uh, we got a few green chromas on the other side. Swimming okay, around. Yeah. Oh, it's so happy. Yeah, well, they're about to get a huge tent rate. All right, guys. So uh, we drip acclimated the abalone, and then I float the abalone for like almost half an hour. Temperatures equalized. We're gonna put in the in the refugium. However, all these skin is kind of retracted, so I'm not sure if that's a good sign. Uh, acclimation may have been too fast. Let me see if it grabs onto the side. Oh, there he goes. He's coming to life. Not holding on yet, but he is reaching out with his uh, foot. See how his, now he's expanded. I'm just gonna place him at the bottom because he is not grabbing onto things. Just place him on a flat side like this. And then we'll see how he does. Alright guys, as you can see here, the abalone experiment has failed. Um, he did not last one night in, uh, in the reef tank. And I think the culprit's probably temperature. Salinity is the same, so it's really the temperature that did him in. Ultimately, it was a failed attempt, and I probably won't try it again unless I have a temperate aquarium. However, nothing went to waste, and now the frozen abalone will make an appearance at my next hot pot party, just as it was intended to at the supermarket. Alright guys, with that said, these are the three stories that I wanted to share with you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment, and let me know which of the three stories was your favorite. And I'll see you guys next Sunday at 9.30 a.m. sharp. See ya! Hey, what's up, Reefer?